In any job, there's jargon or insider vernacular. In fact, maybe you've heard a collegiate freshman and finance major who's paying $25,000 a year talk about the bearish trends of his equity portfolio. Okay, so it's actually important for electricians to be able to talk properly about the framing members around them and the building componentry. I've heard so many people call every single piece of wood in an entire house a stud. Please, 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 for the sake of excellence, stop calling them all studs. We've got rafters and rafter tails. We have joists and joist bays. We have studs and purlins and collar ties, and we need to call them what they are for, this, for the purpose of excellence and clarity. Outlets. I hate to break it to you, but as far as the code is concerned, this is only one type of outlet. An outlet is actually an outlet of the electrical system which is behind concealed walls interfacing with the user. So an outlet is not just a receptacle, which this is, more specifically a receptacle outlet. An outlet is a switch, a light, or any place where the electrical distribution system enters the room or interfaces with the user. Okay, so some common electrical terms that you will encounter on a job site are current, voltage, resistance, power. What do these terms mean and why are they relevant? Well, I'm gonna relate the electrical concepts to water because all of us are more familiar playing with water, using water. It's kind of a safe context and a familiar context. And first, why is it important? Well, let me bring you back to the receptacle. The receptacle has fixed characteristics, right? It has a specified amperage, in this case, max 15 amps. That's current. It has a specified voltage, in this case, max 120 volts nominal. And anything in excess of that is gonna cause this thing to melt. It's beyond its design characteristics. The LED lights in this warehouse, they have a voltage range of 120 to 277. Less voltage than that, they're not gonna turn on. More voltage than that, they're gonna blow up. Right, we need to understand some basics about the electrical concepts. So current is measured in amps. Amps essentially can be related to the size of a pipe through which the water is flowing. The size of the pipe determines the overall capacity of water flow. Voltage is the intensity or the PSI of the water within that pipe. Resistance is essentially a valve in that piping system, like a, a garden hose shutoff or the main shutoff to the house. If that valve is completely closed, no water flow. As you start to crack that valve open and reduce resistance, the water begins to flow. Now the total instantaneous flow of water, that's power. There are mathematical equations which relate all of these electrical concepts together that's not the video for this. I just want you to understand current and amps, voltage and volts, resistance and ohms, power and watts. Conduit, what is conduit? Conduit is electrical piping, right? In this case, I have an inch and a half PVC Schedule 80 conduit. I also have a metallic conduit. This is an EMT, electrical metallic tubing. There are other types of conduit. I kid you not. There's Smurf tube. <laughs> That's more appropriately called ENT, electrical non-metallic tubing. There's IMC, intermediate metallic conduit. There's RMC, rigid metallic conduit. The list goes on, HDPE. The code actually has about 12 dedicated articles to different types of electrical conduits. Engage with us and comment below what questions you have about types of electrical conduit. See, every type of electrical conduit has its strengths, weaknesses, and design parameters. There are costs to consider, there are labor costs, not just material costs, and we're gonna go into that in a future video. Gauge, what does gauge refer to? Actually, we're gonna go into this at a greater detail and illuminate different wire types and gauges, but in brief, gauge refers to the size of the conductor. The higher the number, the smaller the conductor, the lower the number, or larger the gauge, the larger the conductor. What is the rough-in? The rough-in is the portion of work that takes place 
when the building is down to bare framing. No finished surfaces have been installed and all the wiring is taking place that will be concealed behind the walls. That's the rough it. Punch out is a list of incomplete details that need to be finalized before completion of that phase of work. So at the end of the rough in, there's gonna be a punch out. At the end of the finish out, there's gonna be a final punch out. Punch outs exist because sometimes there are dependencies, maybe, uh, or some accidental oversight, but regardless, there are loose ends that need to come to a firm wrap. Finish out. Finish out is the completion of the project. So initial phase is rough in. At the end of the rough in, usually there's some punch out details. Other crafts and trades come in. Inspections take place. The project progresses. After drywalls up, finished, painted, cabinetries and countertops are in place, finished floors are in, everything's nearly complete. Now it's time for the finish out. The finish out is when finished devices go in, plates are installed, fixtures are hung. It is quite literally the completion of the job, the final finish. Whip. What is a wiring whip? A wiring whip is an intentional coil of wire that's installed either behind the wall for future purposes or outside of the wall. Let me give you an example. Vanity, vanity lights in bathrooms. A lot of times, all of the selections that are required to determine the proper and ideal placement of the lights haven't been made at the rough-in. So what we'll do is we'll coil a whip of wire inside of the wall so that once the vanity cabinet is selected, which could be a 30 or a 36 cabinet, six inches different in height, and then the mirror of choice is selected for the bathroom. Then the fixture is selected, and those could be two vanity fixtures, um, sconce type, or that could be one over vanity bar light. There are multiple configurations. So that wiring whip inside of the wall will provide the versatility to then drill the finished surfaces at the finish out once all the selections have been made and dial in an ideal aesthetic according to the homeowner selection. Code, well we throw this term around all the time. What is code? Code essentially refers back to the standardized documents, right? In this case, we typically refer to, as electricians, the National Electrical Code. The National Electrical Code comes out every three years, iteration upon iteration, dealing with new technology, new equipment, new safety standards, and is completely centered around the protection of personnel and property and the prevention of fire. Thank you for joining us for Electrical Terms. Join us for the next video on basic electrical tools. We believe that these are tools that will make you a streamlined and more efficient electrician.